So hi everybody, my name is Jodie and I'm the owner of Ida Boss Dog Training. I've been training dogs for about three years now, firstly for another company and then I started Ida Boss Dog Training. So the name Ida Boss Dog Training is my, my two dogs, Ida and Boss. Boss was a five-year-old rescue boy who I adopted and he was very reactive. Most things set him off. So we did a lot of work with him and he's the reason I became a dog trainer. Boss sadly has passed to the Rainbow Bridge uh, last year and um, he's the reason I became a dog trainer. So I have Ida now, she's a three year old and I've had her since she was eight weeks old. Ida and Boss were both Rottweilers. I also have at the moment a little rescue girl Stella who's a four month old Rottweiler and she arrived at the rescue with some broken ribs and a massive fear of humans. So I'm trying to show her that not all humans is scary. Today I'm going to talk to you about a way to train our dogs that we Today I'm going to talk to you, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous everybody, it's my very first live. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about a new way to stop unwanted behaviours that is positive. We have to remember that most unwanted behaviours is natural for dogs. Dogs will be dogs. They will bark, they will run away, steal socks, dig, play too rough and get super excited. Does that sound familiar? We often tell our dogs no or uh-uh or punish them to try and stop these behaviours. This training language was very popular in the 80s, sadly still being taught today. The negative words can stop the behaviour, absolutely, but check your dog's body language every time you tell them no or uh-uh. The ears will flatten, they might shy away from you, they might yawn to really clip. These are fear-based responses and we never want our dogs to be afraid of us. So. How can we prevent these behaviours? Today, I'm going to show you a much more positive way to interrupt your dog's bad behaviours. I don't think your dog's behaviour is bad. Your dog is just being a dog and looking for ways to get what they need from you. So interrupt a cue, stop unwanted behaviours by having your dogs do something else. Firstly, what is a positive interrupter? A positive interrupter is a noise or a word that you use that means stop what you're doing and come to me immediately. We want them to stop and come. Now let's choose a positive interrupter cue. Often the word no or leave it can be said forcefully or in a negative way. So we want to pick a word or noise that always sounds happy. I personally use brrrr, but I understand that everybody can make that noise. So, there are some other words that we can use. A really simple one, boop, 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 boop. Or a word that is just really hard to make it sound negative. Boop, 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 boop. Cupcake, sprinkles, or even the word treats. Most dogs already know what the word treat means, and so why not use it to reinforce the behavior that we want? Make sure to never use your dog's name. All right, now we've chosen our positive interrupter cue, let's grab some lotto winning food. I like to use barbecue chicken, chopped up hot dogs, cheese, cocktail sausages, you know, the really, really good stuff. If your dog has allergies, you will need to find something that will, something high value that they can have or use the method I will talk a little bit later about. My dog has allergies, so I don't use food to train her. Like any new training, we always start inside the house so the dog can get it right. Start in a room with no distractions, give your dog the space to sniff and look around. While they are busy exploring, say your interrupter cue. When your dog looks at you, use your marker word. Your marker word is usually something like, yes, and then give your dog a treat. At this time, we are just showing your dog that every time you use your interrupter and they look at you, they are rewarded. So we are loading the word or the noise. Do this a few times in a row, then stop and do it again an hour or so later. Remember our dogs have short attention spans, so short training sessions are what works best. Once you have a success rate of about 90%, start to use it randomly during the day, when you're working on your computer, when you're on your phone, when you're cooking dinner, when you're sitting on the couch, when they're playing with a toy. Use your interrupter when the dog looks at you or comes to find you, reward handsomely. Now let's practice outdoors. We should always step up our training, start really easy, and then add a little bit of distraction. So when you have a 90% success rate inside, let's head out into the backyard where the distraction levels are a little higher. I like to train all new cues this way. Inside, where there's low distraction, then backyard where there's a little bit more distraction, 
And then the front yard, big empty space with no dogs, then dogs in the distance. When I roam outside, I always train on lead because we have to set them up to get it right. Put your dog on a lead, wander around the yard, and when they're busy sniffing the air or sniffing the ground, use your interrupter. When they are winning in your backyard consistently, remove your dog's leash and practice saying you interrupt a cue and generally, generously reward the good behaviour. Do you have more than one dog? That is okay. We can train as many dogs as you have, but ideally train them separately to start with and then bring them together and build up slowly. An interrupt a cue only stops the behaviour and we need to ask them to do something else, which is come to your side. When you use your interrupter cue and the dog stops and looks at you, we need to reward this handsomely. If your dog is in the same room as you, they will look at you and you will reward them. If the dog is in another room or outside, they'll come and look for you. You can drop some rewards on the ground near you so that they know when they hear the cue that they have to stop and return to your side. When dogs play with other dogs, it can get a little rough. So to ensure our dogs are playing nicely, we might need to use our interrupter cue to stop play. When you use your cue, the dog will either look at you or come to you. Either response is correct, so ensure that you are reward. When the time, with time, they will come to you for their own re reinforcement. I don't want you to start using your positive interrupt to, inter to interrupt bad behaviour for about three weeks. It can take our dogs this long to learn what a new cue means. The reason we don't want to use it until we till they know it and it works consistently is because if we try to interrupt bad behaviour and it doesn't work, we are undoing all of our good work to teach the cue. So it's better to wait until the dog has learnt what is needed from them before we try to be more exciting or rewarding than the behaviour that they actually want to do. So when your dog is stopping and coming to you every time you use your interrupter, you can then start to positively interrupt unwanted behaviours using your interrupter. Is your dog barking at the door? Make your noise, use your word, reward. Dog chewing on your couch, make your noise, use your word, reward. Okay, so you did your interrupt your cue, the dog returned to your side, they were paid handsomely, then they just go right back to doing what they were doing. What do we do now? This is what we call behaviour chain, and we need to break that. So firstly, we do the cue again and ask the dog to return to us, and then we remove the dog from the situation. Close the door or blind if they were barking at the window, separate from the friends for a little break. This will stop the dog from re-engaging in that behaviour. We call this management. Management and training have to go together. You can't have one without the other. While we are shaping the dog and encouraging good behaviour, sometimes we have to manage the situation. Another example of this is when we go for our daily walk. Every single time the dog lunges or reacts at a fence where there is a dog on the other side, the dog is now rehearsing this behaviour and it becomes part of the behaviour chain. Every time I walk past here and I do this, my human will often give me treats to try and stop the behaviour. A much better way is to prevent or change this behaviour, is to show a different behaviour. We start by getting some wings on the board. Don't go past the house with the dog until we have this confident new behaviour in place. You could use your positive interrupter to keep your dog engaged with you while you walk past. You could use treats before you come up to that fence line by engaging the dog prior to them reacting which can stop them from reacting. If you are more rewarding than whatever it is that is bothering them, such as that noisy, scary dog behind the fence, again, we just need to keep our dogs engaged with us. You could also give them space, walk on the other side of the road, put you between that fence line and your dog, walk behind a mailbox, walk behind a tree, just create some space. The most important thing is to stop the dog from practicing and rehearsing the behaviour. The more they practice, the, more they, the better they get at it, right? This is management. You are controlling the situation, not the dog's response. Moving away and keeping them engaged. Okay. So with my positive interrupter cue, I don't use treats as because my dog is allergic to a bunch of food items. So I use me as the reward. I am so happy they stopped what they were doing and came to my side that I give a gold lotto winning reward in the way of pats. I'm just so excited that they came right away that I show them. Every time they return to your side, you can be excited and they will want to come again. If it is a party here with my human, every time they make this sound, then I'm going to come every single time for that party. Make it part of your relationship building. So when you don't happen to have treats on you, they will still get the reward for doing exactly what you have asked. If we make interrupted cues more fun than barking, digging and playing, you've hit the jackpot. 
We want to ensure that all of our training is done positively and force free. Our dogs should want to do what we ask, not because of fear, but because they are keen to work with us. We pay them with food and praise. We want to build a relationship where there is something in it for them and for us. We also want to set our dogs up for success. When they don't get it right, we need to ask ourselves, was my request something they already know how to do? Did I make myself clear? Did I break it down into basic enough steps that they got each part right? Have we done it enough times for them to remember? Am I asking too much? Are they too tired to train? Is there too many distractions? If we don't do all of these things, we can't expect our dogs to get it right. Go back a few steps and try again. Be clear, consistent and patient. I'm going to share with you one of the most commonly asked questions that I get as a dog trainer. When can I stop using treats to pay my dog? My simple answer, the same day your boss stops paying you to turn up to work. You wouldn't turn up to work with being paid, without being paid right, so why should your dog? Now I'm not saying you'll be treating every single time forever, but what better way to ensure we are reinforcing the behaviours we want by paying them for it? I, en I encourage the use of a pot of gold for anyone feeding kibble or biscuits. I would measure my dog's daily food allowance per the feeding guidelines and then use it to reinforce the behaviour during the day. I would start with some being used to scatter feed. Then each training session, I try to encourage 40 minutes per day, but in small locks, two to five minute sessions per day. Whenever you're waiting for the kettle to boil, do some training. So when you ask for your sit, payment is made. When you ask for your stay, payment is made. Whatever it is you're asking your dog to do, pay them for that. And whatever is left at the end of the day becomes another opportunity to scatter feed. So scatter feeding is where we take the kibble and we throw it on the ground and they get to hunt for that. It's a great enrichment activity for our dogs. Thank you for coming along today and I'm excited to see you putting in your positive interrupters to work. Don't forget for the month of August you can get 20% off treats in our online store. Check out the Furry Friends Facebook page for more details on how to get your discount code and follow us at Art of Boss Dog Training and share your videos with us.